Welcome to The Dwarves, a tactical RPG based on a book I've never read. Quote unquote best selling book, The Dwarves. Let's get started. Fracas made us from stone to protect Gundelgard. Against orcs, ogres, and all the other beasts of Teon. We are the guardians of Gurdogan. We are the children of the Divine Smith. We are the Dwarves. Pause the game anytime by pressing space. Move the camera using the middle mouse button and the mouse... What? The middle mouse button? Oh, to rotate it. Okay, that makes a little more sense. So we have click... Uh, Sure. Had, oh, you right, oh, right click to move. Okay. Uh, click on leap attack on the lower left of the screen or press E and then select your target on the battlefield. Let's take a look at them. We have three moves. Mighty blow that causes lots of damage to a few enemies and knocks them back. Charge. Assault run spanning several meters, pushing enemies aside. And then, of course, leap attack. Uh... Glandolin leaps into the midst of his enemies and knocks them aside. So we have a heavy hit, we have a charge attack, and we have a jump attack. Good to know. Let's hit as many people as we can, right? These, all three of these guys? I tried. <laughs> Let's go target this guy real quick. There we go. Oh, friendly. I think I did some friendly fire there. There we go. Orcs killed 6 out of 60. And I have 6 foot icons? You know, let's charge into the midst of an enemies. There we go. You'll probably be careful with some of this stuff. Let's rotate the camera a bit. Maybe if I do a charge straight to the middle. It was an attempt, at least. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. This is one way to do combat, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm taking hits. I should probably back up. I'm covered in enemies right now. There we go. Jumped back towards the uh, the front line where I'm not going to be completely surrounded anymore. This is just a full-on brawl. Uh, the 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 page that describes this game does brag about the idea of like having huge fights, basically, instead of. Uh, Instead of the more balanced party-based fights that I ex you expect from from uh, games that look like this, let's try charging through. Boom! I just attacked nobody with that. Good job, me. So as I fight, the blue slowly regenerates, and the number of blue. Re it looks like I need three blue to do any of these attacks. So the moment I get one more, let's try to do it at. A heavy hit on these guys. There we go. A present from the workshop. Go over to the chest and click on it as soon uh, as soon as the use symbol appears. With the grenades, you can well be creative. Unfortunately, I'm covered in enemies because I've made poor life decisions because I was trying to have too much fun. Here we go. Sorry, I may have hurt my teammate there. Uh, where are the grenades? There's right there. So click on it. I'd be happy to pass on this present to the Greenskins. Well then, let's ha let's pass on this present to the Greenskins. We now have an R skill uses one blue. Oopsie. There we go. That's a lot of red. I look like it hurt. Yeah, I think I think that more or less even the uh, scale here. Look how crowded they are over there. <laughs> it's admittedly kind of cathartic to watch watch a giant mass of health bars all go flying around like that. Let's see here. There's a cleave hit, making it count. Yeah, right now if I threw a grenade, I think I'd mostly hit our teammates because we're actually kind of densely packed. I can probably t aim it just right in the middle here. There we go. Yeah, I, I can be careful with it. We are greatly outnumbered right now. So there are a lot. There are a lot of enemies to hit. 
There we go. We're about to hit the milestone for number of kills. Charging time. My king! What are you doing here? Gizelbert I and I, the father of the Fifthling clan, has not been on the front line of battle against the creatures of Teon for many cycles. The king surveys the battlefield and the defenders with a grave expression. <sighs> we are too few. <sighs> this you know as well as he does. But there will be no reinforcements arriving. Hundreds of brave warriors lie inside the fortress dying. The illness is running rampant. It brings weakness and death. Stay at your posts. Be as steadfast as the granite of which we are made. Nothing can break us. Vrakas is with us. Well, this is rather nicely animated and voiced. Uh, change between characters at the bottom of the screen by, or by pressing tab. Uh, select more than one at a time by pressing shift and left click or by clicking and dragging a rectangle around them. That, the rectangle always feels more intuitive. Yes, but tap yes. is good, though. So what does he have? Cleave. Lateral blow, dealing damage to several enemies and knocking them sideways. Let's look around a little bit. So Q looks like that. Ooh, that's a big one. All right. W is King's Hammer. Uh, Gizelbert hits the ground with his hammer and stuns nearby enemies. Then for Fracas. Uh... Gizelbert motivates himself and nearby heroes to fight quicker for a short time. It's a very local attack, though, unfortunately. Okay. Let's plan this cleave out, then. Boom! Let's make a mess! The game is paused. Uh, while the game is paused, you can give commands to several heroes in a row, which are executed simultaneously once the game is resumed. So you can give orders to all of your current characters. Oh, there's that selection square we knew about. So we have Glan we have Glandolin and Gizelbet. And he's still got the grenades. Not a lot of them though, I kind of used a lot of them already. Might as well do them now. Charge! Oops, that's the that was the wrong that was the wrong button actually. Oops. Charging time. a chunk of damage. Oops. Kind of wore myself down there. There we go. Let's see if I can get both characters to focus on this guy enough that he goes down. Get up, dude. <laughs> He's taking a rest, isn't he? There we go. Aha, he's down. Let's do more of that. Seems worth it. Yep, heavy hitting attacks have been finished. So the or the ogres are killed. We have two catapults to deal with next. Let's see. So you don't really have a charge skill, but you oh, you can stun people though. So maybe we'll do that. You, on the other hand, can jump past the enemies. Which makes it easier for you to attack the, the uh, catapult. You may have some more trouble with that. Yeah. He's not particularly likely to be able to push past past the uh, enemies, but you can. There we go. There's some damage. Yeah, he can probably take out the catapult before anyone else needs to deal with it. There we go. Certainly helpful to be able to, being able to just cleave your way past all the enemies. Here we go. Q strike. Just give me one more. S oh, there we go. We're all set. These are the ones who attacked us in the tunnels. We suffered great losses beating them back. Come here and I'll split you like a straw, you treacherous elf! In his fury, the old king radiates a ferocious power that none of Sitalia's children could withstand. But the slight, willowy being sitting astride the Shadow Mare just grins down mockingly. You are mistaken. 
We are Alpha. We are here to destroy the elves. All peace-loving beings here in Girdlegard are under our protection, and you cannot open the gate that has barred your path into Girdlegard since the creation of the world. Not us, but perhaps one of your kind. This cannot be. Silence, you fool! Vrakas, forgive me for what I am about to do. Quickly! Information! You must hold them back until I close the gate! <laughs> what is it? There was a traitor from the inside. Why do I get the feeling that that, el that, that elf's gonna go charging through somehow before we can do much about it? Alright, well we're out of grenades. I kind of maybe overused all those. I can still do some damage though. Hello! <laughs> Well, that'll keep some of them busy for a while. I should probably save up for uh, using the heavy damage attack whenever I can. I think I think the elf ran away though, specifically so he could come charging through at a great speed, probably at the last second, just to further cement our defeat. Because this is probably the obligatory beginning of fantasy story thing, where we where some group fails some great thing that sets in motion the events of the uh, entire game, or book in this case. Well they're not they're not standing a chance right now. Yeah, they're actually they're basically gone now. <laughs> Charge Boom <laughs> Glandolin's here to make a mess. <laughs> Look at me. I am Synthras. The Reaper of your death. I will take your life, and the land will take your soul. Get out of my sight, pointy ears. Let me delight at the closed gate a little longer. The gate may have closed, but when you rise again from the dead by the power of the land, you will be one of us, and you will open it. Never! My soul belongs to Vrakas. No, your soul now belongs to the land, and henceforth you will belong to it forever. Now die, and return. Then, hand us Girdle Guard. That's unfortunate. So I was more or less correct. Uh, we did successfully open, close the gate. Uh, the, the elf wasn't leaping over with the crazy horse or anything, but he's just going to take control over all of us. You're a perfectionist, Tungdel Bolifar. I've got a reputation to uphold. If you can't rely on the metalwork of a dwarf, what can you rely on? What can I do for you? For me, nothing. It's Lot Yonan. He wants to see you in his study. In your mind, you go through all the recent incidents that might have annoyed the Magus. Apart from a few little squabbles with his family, nothing worth mentioning happened since the incident with your beard. You nod. Okay. You look dreadful. What a charmer. The maid gives you an ironic, reprimanding scowl. Ikana has been crying half the night. When you were seething, I carried you around the vaults. You played with my beard and I sang you to sleep. Frala smiles. She's heard this story many times before. That was 23 cycles ago. But I'm quite sure you didn't sing. You might have grumbled a bit. If what you've read about the dwarven lifespan is true, It'll be another 300 sun cycles and more before you are called to the Eternal Forge. 
the certainty of one day having to witness Frala's death already burdens your heart. I'd better not keep the Magus waiting. See you later. There's goulash for dinner. So we are using the... Oop. Let's see. From my party and from life, in this case. Uh, so it looks like we're going with the version of dwarves that lived for a very long time. There was a time when you could hardly lift the heavy hammer. Now you barely notice it anymore and it feels like an extension of your arm. Smithing is in your blood. He expects to live for another 300 years, which makes me wonder, will the events of the game cut that short? This is where you swung the forge hammer for the first time 30 cycles ago. No one taught you the craft. It was enough for you to watch Lot Yonan's old smith at work. Whenever the workshop was empty, you practiced and quickly mastered the craft with ease. So we're a self-driven... Is, is that the path I'm supposed to take? Yes, it is. We are a self-driven dwarven blacksmith. Oh, that was weird. Uh... Well, that was unfortunate. It just kind of freaked out. I guess we won't get that that entry. Everything you know about dwarves you learnt from books. The Divine Smith created the dwarves and from time to time you make him an offering of some crumbs of gold. It's the most valuable thing you have to offer Vrakus. You've worked a bit more on Sunya's birthday present last night. The little one is crazy about horses. You, on the other hand, prefer to keep your distance Unless you're fitting them with hooves. Too many legs, and way too big. So this game has a, a German language option for uh, the voice acting. And I'm curious. It said that we were 1.035 or something along those lines uh, cycles later than the prologue. I don't know if that means that uh, it's been a thousand years or one year. Because in with German numbers, the uh... Hey, groundling! Come to the kitchen, we need you! Jollison, a fourth degree famulus and your favorite foe among the students of magic, gives you a disparaging glance and disappears without waiting for your reply. The uh, in German numbers, the comma and the period are used in op for opposite meanings than they are in the uh, with English writing. So I don't know for sure if that meant a thousand years or one or one point zero three five years or something like that. I'm assuming one year, to, to, for the sake of making the prologue relevant to the events of the of the game. Oh, the stairs. I meant the person. I can look at the stairs though. <laughs> what stairs? Lot Yonan's vaults are equipped with laboratories, a library, and private rooms for the Famuli. Together with the forge, the kitchen, and the other utility rooms, it makes up quite an impressive complex. But compared to the courts of the other magi, the seat of power in Yonandar is small and modest. It's rather refreshing to be playing a top-down RPG that's fully voiced all the way down to the, uh... All the way down to, like, the environmental d descriptions and stuff like that. It's, uh... Well, it'll give me a rest. Lot Yonan didn't just take you in. He also taught you how to read and write. But you don't feel like reading right now. Especially as you already know all the books by heart. Master Lot Yonan, Frala told me you wished to speak with me. Ah, Tangdil, come in. Uh, there is a bag over there in the cupboard. Take it out, please. It contains artifacts belonging to my former Famulus Goren. I wish to return them to him. He's in Black Saddle, 300 miles away. 300 miles? That's a long journey. Who are you going to entrust with this? I was thinking of you. Me? There is no one better to take on this journey. You have acquired much knowledge. You are almost a scholar. You know more than most Famuli about Girdle Guard and its inhabitants. 
It is time for you to go out into the world and see it with your own eyes. I... with pleasure. What's in the bag? Magical devices. Uh, you better leave the bag closed if you want to avoid any accidents. Dwarves don't really like magic, and magic doesn't like you either. Rackus gave us so much craftsmanship that there's no space left in our bodies for magic. Strictly speaking, every time you've been too close to magic, it has ended in catastrophe. Perhaps I'll meet some dwarves on my travels. Yes, perhaps. But don't hold out too much hope. And be careful who you talk to. Not everyone out there likes dwarves. Yeah, goblins. They abduct baby dwarves and sell them to magi, from what I've heard. Not the best bit of business I've ever done. But what was I to do? The long noses threatened to throw you into the nearest river. Be on your guard. Look after the bag and don't lose it. May Palandiel be with you. And Varakas too, of course. I'll set off immediately. I'll see you soon, Lot Yonan. Is it kicking us straight out or not? Because I, I kind of want to explore a little more. Yay, still good to explore. Cool. Uh, so the animation... Well, it's rather jarring how it goes from full cutscenes to... Like, Bioware style, two people talking at each other while dialogue options happen. Just because uh, during the dialogue parts, the game goes completely stone-faced, which is kind of... It's like slightly off-putting, but the cutscenes are really nicely animated. Uh, something about the texture of the characters makes me think that the cutscenes feel like stop-motion or something, which of course is not what they are, but they give off a similar feeling from their... Something about their frame rate crossed with like their... The kind of harsh lighting and the really, really textured characters. Of the 200 or so people selected to learn the art of magic under Lot Yonan, there's barely a handful of them you can stand the sight of. You're not at all interested in magic in all its elusiveness and whimsy. Your realm is the Forge. I wonder if there's a button I can hold that makes all of the inspectable things show up. There's our character thing. We are level one, Tongdil. We have zero experience, 1800 health. Our skill is stubborn, passive. If his health is below 30%, Tongue Deal gains bonuses on armor and damage. My one attack is Blacksmith's Blow, a mighty blow dealing lots of damage to a few enemies and throws them back. 15 second cooldown it looks like, uses three little blobs. 23 damage I assume. We have 210 gold. Freyla's Amulet, symbol of protection that Tongue Deal has forged for Freyla. Two provisions, automatically heals injuries during journeys if available. Magical artifacts, some items that you were supposed to bring to Gorin, a former Femilis of Lationen. What do these other buttons do? Main quests, Lationen, talk to your mentor. Where did that? So that must be completed then. The Fem Femilis rucksack. That's just saying to deliver the quest. We don't have any side quests yet. I'm curious, are there controls? Is that all of the options for the entire game? Huh. Well, that's not any help for controls. Let's see, Alt, Control, Shift, Tab. Nope. No immediate hints. I was definitely hoping to find something that I could use to make all of the inspectable things uh, show up on the screen so I don't miss them. Because who wants to miss them? Pill for some food. Don't mind if I do. Hey, what are you doing, groundling? We're still eating here. Why don't you go and get your own portion? Groundling? Sounds awfully racist of you. That just makes me want to steal your food more. Hey, 25 experience for some reason. And no apparent indication of getting food, which is weird. Nope. Oh well, I'll take experience, it's fine. What's this thing up here? Day one of your adventure. Oh, so we lose one food per day. Did we gain food when I picked up the thing? I think they might have said two earlier. Tongdil! Quick! Or the goulash will get burnt! You immediately recognize what the problem is. A chain running over a pulley for positioning the cauldron is detached from its mounting and the cauldron stuck in the fireplace. It's a heavy load and none of the famuli, who feel superior even during kitchen duty, dare do anything. They might burn their fingers or even get a bit dirty. 
Oh, you poor things. It'd be a waste of goulash. And I'm hungry. Here, hold this. With as much concern in your voice as you can muster, you say... Oh, no, no, this doesn't look good. You're pleased to notice he's dripping with sweat. <laughs> I'll get you back for this, groundling! Do you remember when you dyed my beard with some magic spell? I had to shave it off. You stroke your beard, which is unusually short for a dwarf. Damn it! Ah, oh, it's heavy! The young human forces through his pursed lips, letting the pot sink a little. Don't you dare ruin my goulash, boy! The cook with beefy forearms glares at the young man, and after a brief moment, he tries harder. You damned freak! For a moment, you hope the Famulus really does raise his hand to you. But then he comes to his senses and leaves the kitchen, his face bright red. What a pair you are! Worth it. I'd say that was worth it. He seems like a scumbag. I am your godfather, little one. I'll look after you, just like I looked after your mother. Little Akana grasps your calloused finger and smiles at you wide-eyed. The nice, nice little baby. All right. Vegetables, bread, cheese. But the cook is not to be trifled with. Many painful knuckles have taught you that she knows how to handle her heavy wooden spoon and that she may possibly have eyes in the back of her head. The beer that is delivered to the vaults is supposed to be the best beer in Iddersleyn. It's certainly your favorite beer, but you haven't drunk enough other beers to truly know. I'm kind of impressed. This is turning out to be an actual production. Uh, I like a full-on thing. I'm, I'm just used to get, whenever I get codes for stuff, I'm used to that being some indication that it's a, uh, some kind of indie game, usually. But then I saw THQ Nordic on the uh, startup screen. I'm like, oh, I think this is even coming out on consoles or something. Egad. Just as you reach the door, your stomach rumbles. It's not even noon yet. And you think you're going to survive a 300 mile journey without provisions. I have four days of provisions. Why, have I missed something I could use? Maybe I can ask somebody in the kitchen for more provi provisions, or is there, am, I, am I missing something? I think I already grabbed food from the table, right? Oh, there we go. Hello, Frala. Mm hmm? Three hundred! Tungdal, that's no errand. That's an epic journey! Wait, I've got just the right thing. But make sure the cook doesn't see. I'm going to Black Saddle to return a few things to a former apprentice in Amagus. You pocket the rye bread, sausages, and ham. Enough food for the first few days of your journey. I've got a present for you. You take out a symbol of protection that you've carefully made from three horseshoe nails. It's not the finest jewellery in Girdlegard. One look at Frala's face makes it clear that it doesn't matter. She glows with happiness as she takes the pendant. For me? But why? Because you don't see me as an oddity and you're like a little sister to me. You could have said. But you settle with a shrug and a crooked smile. Perhaps I'll even meet some dwarves on the way. Frala throws you a cautious glance. It's a tricky subject that you can't help but broach. They're aren't dwarves down here. You're the only one in Idda's Lane, as far as we know. I know, but I can't just have been born out of a rock. Somewhere in the mountains, I have a clan. Maybe even a family. Yes. Maybe. Frala has reminded you more than once that Lot Yonan wrote to the dwarf clans and none of them were missing a dwarf boy. I have to go. I've got a long journey ahead of me. 
He's still likely to have some kind of clan. I wish you the blessing of Palandiel and Vrakas to protect you from all danger on your journey. Here, a talisman. Whenever you look at it, think of me. Frala winks at you mischievously. And of getting me a nice present. He probably still has some kind of clan hanging out out there, because, uh... Even if his parents are dead, there's probably some extended family of some sort, unless somehow some inc incredible calamity happened where every single member of every fork of his family got wiped out, which, admittedly, may have happened considering what we saw with the gates being probably breached in the very near future by uh, undead dwarf zombie monsters. Whoops. How nice to see you again, Lot Yonan. It must have been an age since we last met face to face. Nudin, welcome. Please, sit down. No, thank you, my friend. These are urgent matters, and I don't have much time. You must come to Leos Nudin immediately. The perished land is stirring. Are you sure? What makes you think that? I found out about 60 orbits ago, during a visit to the borders. Our magical barriers have weakened and become porous. The Elfa have left their land, and a huge horde of orcs have marched into Girdelgard. Were you able to strengthen the spell with your magic? No. I can't repair the damage alone. We need the combined power of the six. The other four are already on their way here, but we need your help too. I will set off for Perista without delay. Oh, and uh, as you're coming, could you also take the opportunity to bring back the things that I lent to you? Of course. I have them already packed in a bag. Oh, thank you. We'll be expecting you. Utterly blinded by the sunlight, you squeeze your eyes tightly shut after only a few steps. The time spent underground has made you so sensitive to light that you're forced to seek shelter in the shade of a mighty oak. Oops. Had the had the fu the uh, mouse down there because I was trying not to have it show up during cutscenes. <laughs> so we travel on little nodes, do we? You reach a small lake by a birchwood. Your feet hurt and your eyes still sting in the unaccustomed sunlight, but a smile spreads across your face nonetheless. You've covered a decent distance on the first day of your big journey. You pitch your camp and lie down to sleep on the hard forest floor. When you awake in the morning, your legs are stiff and achy. Trying not to feel sorry for yourself, you throw your rucksack over your shoulder. You're a dwarf, and dwarves don't complain. Interesting. So every time I move, that must be one day of travel, right? There's a few little places around here, but we're pretty close to my objective, and maybe I should prioritize that over all else. Yep, 17, so it's definitely passing. Now we're on day four. Around midday, with the sun high in the sky and the first beads of sweat appearing on your forehead, you see something move next to the road, a few hundred meters ahead. Some crows are pecking at something in the long grass. Let's sneak up on them. The creaking leather armor, the clattering rucksack, and a dwarf's inability to be quiet makes the crows flap around as you move from one bush to another. You give up trying to be stealthy, stand up straight, and see two human bodies in the flattened grass. Stealth is clearly not our forte. What are we, what are we finding here, though? Oh, there's the body. One of them. A slender man lies in front of you. Dressed in an expensive robe. It is in the colors of Turgur the Fair Faced, one of the six Magi. The dead man must be one of Turgur's famuli. You don't see any wounds. He 
you don't see any signs of a struggle in the area where the corpses are lying. Were they stabbed by a companion? A stranger could hardly have crept up on them with such sparse cover. You look down on a tall, broadly built man. He's wearing dark brown leather armor that is strengthened with iron plates. There's a sword lying next to him. Was he trying to defend himself against something or someone? There is no blood on the sword. So if he was fighting anything, he failed to land a blow or some evidence was was taken away. A rucksack that probably belonged to one of the dead. It seems to have been searched and then thrown away carelessly. You find a few implements, some provisions, and a map. A route is drawn on it from Perista, Nudin's capital, to Lot Yonan's vaults. They must have they must have been carrying something important that they were that was worth killing them for. Hmm. Nothing. Nothing again. You halt. There is something. Another rucksack. You open the rucksack and recognize that someone has already rummaged through it. As well as some implements and writing utensils, you find a pouch full of gold and a talisman. The gold is proof that this is not a case of robbery. You really should take the gold if you're going to go after people like this, If you just to make it look like a robber at the very least. So what was the talisman exactly? Got ourselves a little bit more gold. We also got... For the, oh, that's Frala's scarf we got from earlier. Keepsake from Frala. Brings good fortune to the wearer. Good luck with that. We've already found bodies. It's not a the best sign. So where does one find this talisman we've added to our inventory? Curious. You Oops. You cast another uncertain glance at the rucksack. Oh, take the talisman. Why didn't that work last time? Warmth and a feeling of security flush through your body as you touch the talisman. You feel safer just holding it in your hand. I'm taking you with me. There we go. I must have pressed the wrong the wrong button last time or something. Talisman of protection. Simple. When damage is received, there's a fifty percent chance of reducing the damage by fifty percent. So. You can almost uh, think of that as an overall damage reduction of 25% on average. Can I use it on my character? There we go. Makes sense to have that equipped. Let's sort of look around a little bit more. Looking for any sort of details, but I think that might be it. So what were they killed for? Perhaps we'll find out as we go along, or maybe this is a random occurrence that speaks of larger events that are outside of what we're dealing you with. You scour the area once more, and ask yourself what to do next. Yeah, let's bury the dead, and then continue on our journey. I didn't see any other clues to look for. It's time-consuming and strenuous work digging shallow graves in the ground with a stick, and covering the corpses with a few stones. But it should at least keep the crows from their feasting for a while. You continue on your way so as to put a few more miles between you and your grisly find before night falls. Okay, we're now on day five. So we've got a decent chunk of supplies still, so we're doing fine. Can I rotate the camera? I actually can't. Okay. One day to go. You see a flickering light through the trees some way from the path. It might come from a campfire. Oh, maybe this isn't my objective location. Maybe it's just an interesting location. Interesting. So I can... I can approach loudly so people know I'm coming. Try to sneak or ignore it and leave. Let's announce ourselves. You walk towards the fire with confident strides until you finally make out three broad-shouldered men with axes. 
Two rabbits are sizzling over the fire. The men are joking with one another, but you can only understand the odd word. They haven't noticed you yet. Once you reach the edge of the firelight, you say amicably, Greetings. My name is... The men jump up and grab their axes. Who's there? Well, I'll be. Is that a groundling? The men look you over suspiciously. Wow, this may go poorly for us. <laughs> uh, I can introduce... I can be polite. Let's see. I say, I, I, I apologize for the intrusion or just say I have nothing against a warm fire in some company. Or say put down your weapon so we can talk. Uh, let's apologize? My name is Tungdil. May I know with whom I have the pleasure? <laughs> a perfect stranger. A groundling speaking like a king. <laughs> we are woodcutters. Talk our language, or better still, get lost. I only wanted to be polite. Sod your politeness and your pretty words, Grandling, and be off with you. The man strengthens his grip on the axe and glares at you with sinister yellow eyes. Well, this has not go. This has not gone well. But at least they don't appear to be bandits. They just appear to be workers. So let's maybe back away. You shrug your shoulders indifferently and take three small steps backwards without taking your eyes off the men. All right, if I'm not welcome here, then I'll go. Good. And don't even think about coming back to stab us in the back or steal from us. We'll keep guard. There's nothing here for grandling scum. Let's just stop talking. They don't respond well to that. Although your heart is beating wildly, you turn around and walk back to the path without saying a word. <laughs> Crawl back underground! <laughs> you try to ignore the ridicule. It was a clever decision to go. You're not a good fighter, and taking on a bunch of woodcutters is not part of your mission. Well, they didn't take very kindly. Uh, it was best to just leave, though. They're basically acting like idiot children. There's no reason to engage. Kind of curious about this place down here. Since that was apparently just an interesting little event and not my quest, because this question mark over here must be my actual objective. And that was just a little side thing. 